Wow, do we have an wow, awesome have treat an for awesome you today. For you we have today. Ruth with us we and we're going to be talking about open source and her source, journey into open source. Journey, She's going to give a talk of tips talk. and I'm not doing it any justice. Let me pass over to Ruth. Let Ruth tell us more about herself and more about what she's going to talk about today. So have your questions, your ideas, everyone ready, write them in the chat. Ruth, over to you. Hello everyone, thanks for coming in. I'm Ruth Ikega from Nigeria and I'm going to be talking about how to get into open source as a beginner, as I am also a beginner. So I'm going to be sharing my experience of how I started tech and how amazing it has been for me and how I have been able to actively contribute to open source, even with my little skill set. So stay tuned and listen more. Awesome. So how did awesome. you get so into tech? Let's start at the beginning. When did you start and how did you get into it? Okay, so um, I'm actually like on the description, you can see there that I actually studied microbiology in school and I wasn't even interested into tech prior to now. Like I didn't, I didn't even like computers. I didn't want anything to do with it. I just had my phone and I, I don't even game, so I just had my phone and that was okay for me. I didn't want to do any other thing. So this year, 2020, I said, okay, I was going to do something different for myself. I wanted to make a change and I said, okay, on my birthday, like, okay, I, I was born in March. So I said, okay, March, I was going to start and I was going to start tech, I was going to start coding. So March, I started coding and that's been awesome. It, I think it's been six months. So uh, yeah, that's how I got into tech. And yeah, I started with Python. And Python is quite beginner friendly because the syntax is very friendly. And I was able to understand some quick things and do some stuff. So that's basically how I got into tech. Into tech. Yeah. That's awesome. So you just got you've been doing it for six months. So it's quite um, it's quite new. So people who are watching, if you haven't got involved in open source yet, there's no excuses. Ruth's doing it. She's contributed to lots of projects. I've I reviewed some of her awesome pull requests as well. So definitely get involved. And we're going to give you tips, everyone, today on how to do it. So let us know any questions in the chat. So Ruth, what was your first like pull request or contribution to open source? Do you remember? Yeah, sure, I do. <laughs> so, um, Oscar, um, Open Source Africa, they have like, um, there's this um, initiative for um, bringing more women into open source called WOSCA. So, it's like um, a joint program between Open Source Africa and um, She Code Africa. So, She Code Africa is a non profit for women so to get into tech. So, there was like a joint program called WOSCA. So, it started in July. So there was like a launch. During the launch, there was an open source workshop. So prior to that day, I already heard about open source and I have a couple of friends that actively contribute to open source. So I've already heard about it and I was like, okay, I was going to attend this WOSCA launch. So the open source workshop was just about a first contribution. There's this, um, there's this project on GitHub called First Contributions where you just add your name, to the to the project as a contribution so it sounded so simple so i just had to during the workshop um zainab was the one that handled the workshop so i just had to like add my name and that was like the first time i was trying to use git and trust me git is a whole lot of stress for beginners so i just even with the mistake uh oh, I think we uh, lost roof there for a second there were technical issues going across the globe i'm sure she'll be uh be back in a minute. Um, maybe a computer crashed or something. But you could hear. Let me just fill in 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 the in the gap while I'm waiting for Ruth to come back. You can hear that. You know, go find an open source project that is welcoming. We've got some in our community where you can add your name, similar to what Ruth was saying. There's the um, my first contribution, I think she called it, but also. Um, also, uh, you know, we have one where it's called, we call it Hacktoberfest practice, where you can just uh, add your name to the, to the readme for practicing that flow, you know, creating an issue with your name, then raising, um, forking the project, making a change and then making a pull request. So I want Ruth to talk about that, not me. You hear about me talking about this all the time. So hopefully Ruth will be back in a second. Um, maybe, uh, yeah, 
just um, she's having some internet issues for the moment. She will be back. There is a plan to discuss a lot more about her journey and we have her talk ready as well for you, which I'm really excited about doing. She's giving this talk uh, at an open source conference in a couple of weeks. So we thought it'd be really great to share that with you all and with practice. So just bear with us while you're waiting. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and share with your friends if, if you think they'll be interested and subscribe to support the channel. It's completely free. It will also notify you when uh, new videos and new live streams uh, get started if you hit that bell button. Right, I'm crossing my fingers and I'm hoping Ruth comes back any moment now. Let me just check my messages. Aha, Ruth's back, we're good. Ah, uh, but we can't hear you, Ruth. Hey, Ruth. Oh, no, I, now I hear uh, you. Now I hear you. It's all okay, good. is it fine? Oh, sorry sure. about that. No problem, yeah. it happens. No problem. It wouldn't <laughs> be a live stream, a live stream without stream. technical <laughs> issues and everyone's still here we've still got over 30 people here they're still being really supportive and really looking forward to hearing your story and can't wait for your talk on open source and all those tips and we've got that coming up soon everyone so be patient so where were we so we've got some actually really good questions let me bring these up so uh let me bring these ones up this is from uh, Azing. Let me bring this one up. And it asks about these open, short, uh, these open source initiatives. Where, uh, can we get some links for these? Yes. So what we'll do after the live stream, uh, Ruth will send me all the links or she can put a comment in the video and I'll pin that comment to the top of the, the video on YouTube so you can see all the links. So we will um, definitely uh, include all of those. But it's a great, great point. Really, really good. Okay, so Ruth, okay. So we were talking we were about, talking about uh, you contrib your first contribution, you made yeah, it to okay. the repository, what was it called? First contribution, first that, that's contribution. actually the name of the repository, it's just like, you just add your name to the project using, um, you just clone the project, add your name and that's your contribution to the project. So that's it's just basically to help beginners um, understand its workflow. So that's that's actually like the idea of the project, and I posted I posted about it on Twitter. I was like, "Hey, I just made my first uh, open source contribution, and there was so much love from the community. Everybody telling you congrats for just adding your name, and it was it was really really amazing." So I said, "Okay, I was going to continue contributing yes. to more projects." <laughs> so uh, and Oscar said a launch, um, sorry, a challenge rather. Um, there's this challenge that happened in July. It was uh, a way to bring women to contribute to open source. So it was make up to 10 pull requests in the month, just the way Hacktober first, similar to how Hacktober first is. So make this number of pull requests and you get a domain name for free. So I engaged in that challenge. I actively engaged in the challenge and I actually got the domain name, a free one. <laughs> So yeah, that, that was my first experience and as simple as that, it was really worth it. Yeah, so that was well, the first experience. Awesome, we've got a couple of really so good questions, really coming, good up. questions so, uh, coming up. So uh, one's from uh, Mohammed. it says, where do I start? I think we've covered this in that the, uh, was it your, your first contribution repo? Sorry, what was the name of the repo again, Ruth? First contribution. First I think I should get that in the chat. First yeah, contribution, yeah. yeah. It's on GitHub. Awesome. So we will we will share yeah. these links at the end, just so we don't uh, try and keep pasting them in the chat now. If you've got it to hand, then great. But otherwise, don't worry. So I think it's really good to. I mean, Ruth, just to reiterate, what Ruth was saying she was saying people were really encouraging, supportive, and and when you do a contribution on GitHub, share it on Twitter. Get other people, uh, to not only to encourage and motivate you, but also encourage other people to uh, to do the same, which I think is important. Yeah, so I'm answering um, for Mohammed's question. So how do you get started? Um, like I said, first contributions is actually a good start. So Eddie should post that in the link very soon. So what first contributions is, it helps you with Git workflow because you're going to be using Git if um, you're someone who codes. We don't do design because sometimes designers do not actually like using Git or they do not use Git or GitHub. So if you're someone coding, you're going to be using Git, the tool, a lot. So first contributions is a great start for you to familiarize yourself with the Git workflow because that's a tool you're really going to be using. So starting with that, it's, it's actually a great start. 
then additionally how to actually look for projects so depending on your stack so github actually has like a feature where you can look for projects particular to your stack so let's say you do python right so you can search for python project that you can contribute to now another thing i want to point out is you should not look at the quantity so something someone um something always tells me is um something the very great developer uh, open source advocate in africa so he always says look at um quality before quantity so do quality don't don't look at if the project is so big you mustn't be contributing to google to contribute to open source right so it, it doesn't depend on the amount of the project just make quality contribution so don't really put your eyes on the big projects there are other smaller projects too because sometimes when you put your eyes on the big projects you can get so confused in the code space in the code base yeah so that's, That's a really good point. Really I love the way you've said that. And I just want to reiterate yeah. some of those points. The bigger the project, the more active the project, the steeper the learning curve. Because like you said, there is more project or code or documentation to understand and learn. The busier it is, so the more chance that the, your changes become out of date and you have to keep making changes because there are conflicts, etc. So I think you raise a really good point. People just need to get started and don't need to try and think massive. And we actually have uh, another question. I do think I've brought it up. Let me have a look. Um, how do I make sure my PR is uh, that I've created is merged into the master into the code base? What uh, what tips would you give? Okay, so um, now let's let's take a project for example. So how do you make sure it's actually in a reviewer or the maintainer's power to merge a pull request, right? So how do you make sure is, are you sure the PR you made, is it, is it in line with the instructions? Because usually the issue has an instruction, okay, change this on the footer. So if I have done it um, accurately, I should, when I submit my pull request, the, the normal flow is someone is assigned to review that project, sorry, that pull request you've made. And then if there are no mistakes, the pull request is made. So another issue with beginners is for if the project is a big one, so you know there, there are so many pull requests coming in. So you have like sometimes you have if the project is really very active, there are so many pull requests coming in. So you have to be a little patient for to wait for the maintainer to actually it it, it takes a whole lot to maintain a project really. So you have to like give it maybe okay you can say um, you can send a message to the maintainer or someone will bring okay i've made my pr but the, the key thing here is patience because there are so many pull requests coming in and you need time for the maintainer to actually look at the pull request and say okay good job and go ahead and merge the pull request so just what you need is a little patience then make sure you've done everything everything is in check yeah so that's just what you need that's so true. And I want to add one little tip to that and say, the smaller the pull request, the better. The bigger it is, the less likely it is to get merged. So definitely keep it small. I would rather have 10 pull requests that have like one change in each one rather than one pull request with you know, 10 lines, because there's more 10, to test. 10 files or 100 files change. Yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah, right. Um, some people say to me, you wouldn't believe it, some people say to me, oh, I'm going to raise a pull request soon. I just need to make more changes because it looks too small. I'm like, no. So that's great tips. I really, really like that. Uh, okay, we did have another question. Let me see. And we will, we're going to take a pause on questions shortly, and we are going to, to, to jump into um, a few things that are coming up. Uh, but these were quite, these were quite relevant. Um, this one's really good, actually. This one's, this one's perfect for you, I think. Let me see. Okay, this is by Data Night. Must every contribution be code and documentation? No. Okay, so I I think that should, if I should give a statistics on all my contributions since I started, I'd say 20% code, 30% uh, documentation, and 50% ideas. So one thing people do not know is your ideas are valid, right? Like you, um, there are different ways to contribute to open source. There's design, there's just attending those meetings and showing up, there's 
bringing up ideas, organizing an event, an open source event, sponsoring an open source event. So it's not just code and documentation for contribution. So um, a couple of weeks back, I um, uh, I contribute to the Chaos Project, um, a Linux Foundation project about creating metrics for open source software. So I just thought of an idea which I thought was lame. I just I, I didn't want to even say it out. Like I thought it was one lame idea. Like these people would be like, what am I even saying? <laughs> so I I I took up courage. I said, okay, let me just say it out in these two ways. I started with the chat and I just gave the idea and everybody was like, yes, yes, we actually did not think of that. And it's actually now a project, a metric. So your ideas are valid. If it's just ideas you have to contribute, you are you are hundred percent good to go. Every every contribution, it must not it must not be about code, it must not be about documentation, it must not be about design. You can just be using the softwares and reporting issues too. Like you could you're using the website or the software and you notice a bug, you can come back to the to the GitHub project and say, Okay, I noticed that the footer was not in place. So it can just be correcting mistakes where you see mistakes and it must not be it's not just about the pull request. So some people think making open source contributions is just about getting so many pull requests or getting many pull requests merged. No, it's just it's about your relevance to that project, adding something to that project. So it's not just about um, code and documentation. There's a whole lot involved. I love that. It's about adding value to that project. You're right. Absolutely. And I think I've seen some really interesting issues created on our projects that might not quite be, um, how do I say it? Might not be the perfect idea, but no idea is perfect. But they spark, exactly, they spark the conversation. And then we thought, now we've kind of tweaked it slightly. Now it's like the great idea and let's do it. So you're absolutely right. I think the key thing about open source is to get involved in the conversation and either start a conversation or get involved in the existing one. So Ruth, that is just perfect. So thank you for that. That's awesome. Yeah. Right, I want to take a pause on questions for the moment. Um, so we talked more about your, we've spoken about your journey, how you got into tech, how you got into open source. So what's next for you in, uh, in, in I guess, tech and open source? You have a conference coming up in a few weeks and we're going to hear about your talk shortly. So what else? Where do you see yourself in six months, 12 months? Okay, so um, I, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but I think coming into tech was really very hard for me, like understanding some terms, I still struggle with them. So I'm creating a space for beginners where every beginner is welcome. So there's, um, when I, before I started contributing to open source, so I stumbled upon one project and there were tags on the issues and it was first timers only tag. So I opened one of them and it was, I was, I, I didn't understand anything about the issue. So I read down the comments and the maintainer commented, this issue, is, this um, project is not about first timers in uh, tech or beginners in tech, but first timers in open source. So there was that, that, in, in, um, that marginalization between Okay, so beginners in tech cannot contribute to this project. So just beginners in open source who have been in tech before. So I actually said, okay, this is a space I'm going to create for beginners where every beginner, no matter how small the skill set, even though it's just one day into tech, that you can actively contribute to open source. So and that's what my talk is actually like centered on for the state of source comment. Yeah, so that's that's the space I'm creating and I'm making little efforts to ensuring it actually goes on well. Yeah. That sounds really that awesome sounds and really cool. exciting. I can't wait to hear more about it in your talk and I can't wait to see what you create over the next few months and so on. It's going to be really exciting. And I think you bring up another good point. When people are looking to contribute to open source projects, they should look at existing pull requests open or close or issues open or close and have a look at the conversation. If the maintainer is not so keen on um, having the benefit of new people to their project, there's two benefits. I want to quickly explain what they are then don't waste your time on those projects. There are so many projects out there that really do want uh, the new contributors for two reasons. One, it helps them grow their community. 
And two, having a new pair of eyes on your project is so beneficial. So today, I don't know if they're on the stream, but I had uh, someone comment on one of our issues for our community projects. And they said, I'm, I'm new, I'd like to contribute, how can I get involved? And I thought, brilliant. Have a look at the project, what doesn't make sense, because that's where we can start making improvements. I'm more than happy to help them fill in the gaps, but I want their point of view to say, this doesn't make sense let's talk about it and we can talk about it and make it and make it better so that's awesome okay Ruth. Oh, sorry like contributions where um i just had to like look at the the project and look for little issues like it could be like a little misspelling or something so just looking at it i i wasn't the one making those changes but i just had to report back and say okay this could actually need a change. This is not actually inclusive. This is not actually fine. So it's any any contribution matters. Any, any contribution, exactly. exactly. Yeah. exactly. It all adds value. It imagine adds value. if every imagine day every one day person one contributed person. the tiniest contribution. Imagine in a yeah. month how much better that project will be. And it might be a spelling mistake, and I might yeah, understand I might that it's a spelling mistake. You know, Ruth, you'd see it as a spelling mistake. But where English isn't your first language, if it's a spelling mistake, it actually makes it really hard for people to understand what's going on because they might put it into Google Translate or it doesn't quite make sense. So those spelling fixes, if anyone sees any spelling fixes in my pull request, sorry, in my repos, please send me a pull request. I'll be really grateful. And I'm sure there are lots of spelling mistakes because my English is terrible. <laughs> so Ruth, are you, are you ready? I think everyone's waiting and everyone's exciting waiting for, your for your talk. Are you ready? Are you ready? You're going to do great. <laughs> okay. Let me bring up your slides. Hopefully this is your first slide. If not, I'll let you navigate around. Okay. I'm going to be quiet and Ruth, you let me know when you want me to, uh, after the, your talk, we'll jump in and, and answer some more questions from the chat. So apologies if anyone's uh, asked some questions in the chat. We will address them shortly. You might have to copy and paste them and ask them again. Uh, we'll let Ruth do her talk, and then we'll continue with the conversation and the Q&A with the community. While everyone's watching, by the way, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps support the channel. And subscribe if you haven't already. It's completely free. Right, Ruth, over to you. Okay. So um, for 30 seconds, if you're not a beginner, even though you're a beginner, I want you to reflect on those days where you you didn't know anything about code or you would not written hello world before and you thought it was so hard. And those days where you didn't understand that open source project, those days where it was really hard for you to see yourself contributing to those projects. Yeah, I'm... Um, Ruth Ikega, and I want to give a talk on a beginner inclusive approach to open source because as a beginner in tech, it has been an amazing and a sad experience for me contributing to open source with my little skill set. So I want to talk about the pain points that I've had to go through contributing to open source in a month. I always thought I wasn't technical enough because I was coming from a microbiology degree. I didn't like computers. I didn't I didn't know I didn't know my way around computers. I could only do a Microsoft Word document. So I thought I wasn't technical enough to contribute to any to any open source project, be it big or be it small, because Git was a very scary tool. I heard I was going to be using Git a lot. So and it was a very scary tool because anything I just click on or any any command I type, I just see so many errors and I have to always search them up. And I also thought I was asking too many questions because I actually ask a lot though. But I always thought I was asking too many questions to the open source maintainers, to those contributing to the project. And I found a lot of confusing tools. Using IRC, I think, was the major was the major confusion for me because I was really confused. There are a whole lot of tools. There were new tools I had to start using because um, I needed to communicate in the project. And I I I had difficulty doing that because I thought my background was not technical enough to contribute to any open source project. So how do we actually salvage this? How do we actually 
what what do we actually do to make to make this experience for beginners coming into open source yeah, to make it more better for them what do we do so i have a plan the first one is empathy so when i say empathy i mean empathy in answering a question from a beginner coming into an open source community or a project these are people that you're going to get in contributors from all over the world thank thank goodness we are being diverse and inclusive so these days we get contributors from different parts of the world with different skill sets so you should apply empathy to answering those questions to leading them through to to telling them okay you're going to get through this telling them git is not so hard it just it just takes time and practice you're going to you need to apply empathy to handling a beginner the next plan is hand holding hand holding is really very difficult because you're like i said earlier you're going to be ans answering a lot of questions you're going to be getting people who do not understand you have to explain but hand holding works like a chain so if i hand hold someone who is who is um, a community helper who is passionate about the community that one person hand holds two and two hand holds four and the chain just keeps going and you get more beginners into open source right the next thing is on your onboarding process you need to review your onboarding process so for some projects some open source projects and communities you actually think your onboarding process is great but a beginner is finding it difficult getting in a beginner is finding it difficult understanding these tools a beginner is finding it difficult not knowing how to navigate through not even knowing what git or github is so you need to in, in, review your onboarding process you need to you need to get data from people who were once beginners and say okay how was this onboarding process for you what what how did you feel like you get data and review and see how your your onboarding process can be better to include more beginners because we are losing a lot of beginners. I once did um, a Twitter poll like some months back and the, the, the statistics for people who are beginners who do not know they can contribute to open source were pretty high. So we need to review our onboarding process and get enough beginners into tech. So it's not just your source code or your software design pattern that should be open. We as individuals, we as contributors, we as open source maintainers should be open to applying empathy to every beginner's question and leading every beginner along. Thank you. That was amazing. I'm seeing lots of uh, comments in the chat. Uh, saying how people can really relate to that and how inspiring you are. So I think, yeah, it's really, really amazing that you've powered through, you've had challenges, but you've powered through and now you want to encourage other people to join, which I think is just awesome and awesome and epic. Really, really is. So... Wow, I'm still digesting all the all the great things you great things you said, and I, I love the idea of your initiative. And I do want to encourage more people to uh, you know get in, involved. Actually, one of the things that I think people could probably write in the chat is what are some of the challenges they have getting involved in open source, and what do they want to get out of it? So we can um, we can see what people are gonna gonna write. Okay. Um, so we'll see that. Let me bring up some questions. So let me see if everyone has written any questions before and I've missed them. If you can just write them again, please, it'll make my life easier than trying to go through all the all the chat. Um, but you mentioned helping other people. and I think that's really good because even if someone's only, you know, take you, for example, six months into your career, then or into your journey I know you're helping other people and that's why I love helping you so much because I know you're helping yeah. other people and that helps me yeah. scale more I don't necessarily want to uh, I want to scale and the way I can scale is help people who help other people so you're helping other younger girls or a 12 year old girl I think do open source yeah sure yeah I, I just I just take pleasure in in making sure that you get your first PR. So if it's just the first one we are just going to do and let's 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 you see how in how amazing it is to contribute to open source and to a project. And just before we go into the questions, I want to add something. So um, first, Eddie is an amazing open source developer advocate. He's really, really amazing. So I think I, I got to know Eddie from one of the live streams he had that was um, last month or a couple of months ago 
So I joined a Edith community and there was a particular um, issue that I saw on Edith. Uh, it was about just on a TypeScript code, something about um, iterating through capital letters. So, and from my background, I just know little of Python. So I saw the issue and I was like, hmm, this sounds logical. I think I can do it, but it's actually TypeScript. How do I actually do this? So I'm getting somewhere. So just um, try to follow up the story, then I'll hit the point where I'm getting to. So I said, okay, this looks logical. So mm, I think I can, I can do this. So I, I made a comment. I said, hi, I want to contribute to this issue, but I don't actually know what to do. So uh, I think someone from the community just mentioned in the comment the exact line of code I was changing and just dropped it in the chat. And all I had to do was copy the line of code and just paste it in the, in the, in the code base and it worked. So the point I'm trying to make is the issue might look very scary. It's, it always, it always is, especially when there's no, the, the description is not sufficient enough. It might look scary, but you should ask questions. There's, there's a whole lot that goes on when you ask questions, like when you ask questions the right way, right? So when you ask questions, you can get clearance on whatever issue or whatever difficulty you are facing as a beginner you should learn how to ask questions you should make it a habit of asking questions it goes a long way i was able to contribute to that typescript code that i do not know how to write hello world in typescript or anything about typescript but i was able to contribute because i asked a question right so and that's that time I, my achievements contributing to a TypeScript code is one of my achievements. That's so awesome. <laughs> so isn't please it? ask questions yes. whenever you're not yes. clear. Always ask yeah. questions, Always definitely ask to questions. reiterate that a hundred times. And I think asking questions is a skill that we need to, just like coding, need to practice. Sure. I've, I've noticed from so many people in our community that their first question they ask is quite generic. And, um, yeah. And it's quite hard to answer a generic question, but as they ask more questions, I think they get better at honing in about, you know, what the question is. And it makes it easier for other people in the community to, to help to kind of answer as well. Um, and I think one thing that our community does is we have a strict code of conduct. We're really welcoming and inclusive and we do encourage, and we do encourage um, people who are new into the community and the tech to also help other people because even yourself, as we were saying, six months in, you're helping someone, a 12 year old who is only maybe, I don't know, a month in, for example. So I think everyone can help someone else. And I think when helping someone else, they learn a lot. I know in the last few months when I started this community, I have um, learned so much. I had the YouTube channel for like two years, but doing the Discord and the GitHub organization, I've learned so more seeing what questions people raise, made me think about things very differently. And that's really helped um, you know, me get better and hopefully help more people. I do want to say one thing about the community, actually. So if anyone does want to join our community, there is a Discord link. It should be in the description below. I just pasted in a GitHub uh, organization link. Raise an issue on the support repo and just say, I want to be added to the organization and then I will add you to the organization. And so you can have it appear on your GitHub profile. Shows a bit more activity there. You will also get a green square for raising that issue. And if you've never used GitHub before, what recommendations should we give them, Ruth? So we just ask them to raise any question? Yeah, any question. Um, we have like discussion channel, like discussion feature. Eddie has a discussion feature where you just ask any question. Your questions are welcome. Just ask any question would do well to lead you through. And also, I, I, like I said earlier, I take pleasure in making sure you get a first PR so you can continue contributing to open source. So I do like my my DM on Twitter is always open. So I think I've had like a mini workshop that was last week where I did um, a run through of how to contribute to an open source project using Git and GitHub. So anytime if you're confused, Eddie, Eddie's community is really very supportive. I've been there, I've asked my my number of dumb questions. There are <laughs> no dumb questions. Them. <laughs> yeah, so I just wanted to relate, but 
ask, feel free to ask your questions and join in on Eddie's Discord link. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ruth. And if you haven't got any questions at the moment or you're a bit nervous, maybe read some of the other questions uh, for the people watching yeah. if they want to get into it. Just maybe put a comment. Or if you just want to get a green square for today on your GitHub activity, just raise a test issue and we can just close it. And you still get a green square for today. It's just breaking that ice of getting into, you know, raising an issue or just something like that. Um, okay, uh, I've missed loads okay, of questions loads in the chat. Questions. I really need to yeah. catch up. Mm. Let me see. So, um, so some people uh, say I'm late. You're not late. Well, you have missed it. It will be on the live stream uh, video will be on my channel afterwards. So you can catch up. I think it takes about YouTube between six and 24 hours to kind of render it. So it might not appear till tomorrow. Uh, what else have we got? Um, we have spoken about this, but I do want to, I think as we're talking about open source and getting into open source, uh, Joy says, I'm still finding my way around Git and GitHub and it's been a major challenge and um, scared in contributing to open source. So we have spoken about this. Is there anything else you want to reiterate, Ruth, or uh, just say yeah. extra? The thing is, I was also scared. Like like I said, when I whenever I tried typing a command, I just get so many errors and I go to Stack Overflow and I guess still get confused and so just going on. But what I've noticed generally in life in tech is practice does a whole lot. So what I usually say is it's actually like a joke, but I usually say even Linus um has issues with using git because i think every every developer or every tech person there's always a problem you have with using git so don't feel don't feel out of the way if you're having issues just try to practice more just like i said first contribution helps you practice so just try to practice more with time you just get better i'm, I'm still learning to get better I, I still have my own share of confusions in git but just you get better so while taking those courses while reading those documentation or while reading one blog post about git and github you should practice do you should practice doing it so practicing it helps it goes a long way to helping you uh, understand how to navigate your way through git and github yeah and uh, you made me think of something else. If someone's having a challenge at the moment and they still want to solve it themselves and not ask the question, if you solve it yourself, or you think, well, even if you don't think it's a common issue, I bet you it is. I was going to say raise an issue or raise a discussion point and answer it yourself because then you get your green square and you'll help someone else in the community. And I am looking to do an open source kind of course and that I'll use those questions and answers to help me build that so we can then help other people. We did have an amazing comment here by Fred. I really love this. Oh, no, comment come back. Where's it going? It's all over the place. There we go. It's back. Fred says, okay, I'm inspired. Awesome. awesome. So I want to contribute to open source. Where is this community? I did paste a link into the, the chat below. Hopefully you found it. If you haven't, just put another comment and let me know. But I love the bit where it says, okay, I'm inspired. Ruth, you've done it. You've inspired people to, uh, to get into open source, which I think is just awesome. Oh, we have another good question here for you, Ruth. Okay. What is a green square? A green square. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so a green square, um, GitHub has, if you check your profile, if you scroll down your profile, you see like a chat on uh, GitHub, on your profile. If you scroll down a little, you see a chat. So there's actually like a square. Or uh, did you want to like further explain that or are you trying to show it? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to bring up my screen to, to, to show it. Okay, um, to show it. So I think showing is better than seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Okay, yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, let's so look. hold on, Karen. Show it in a minute. Let me bring up oh my bring up my screen. Hopefully we're still here. So let me make this bigger as well. So these green squares are you have them on your profile and it shows activity. And we're all chasing those green squares, right? <laughs> and this green square is so, it's so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I raised lots of questions. Um, should we have a look at Ruth's? Should we have a look at Ruth's? If I go to our community... My own, mine is not, my own, mine is not so lovely. 
but it's still it's still it's still activity i think it's really good so let's have a look so this is our community for anyone uh, that wants to get involved to get involved go to the support repo i'll share a link now in the chat go to issues and just raise a new issue and don't worry about labels don't worry about anything else just write a comment that people have done already i want to join the community or i want to join etc I'll share this in the chat and I'll send you an invite after this uh, live stream and uh, we'll get you uh, invited to um, the community. So we wanted to show Ruth's one, right? So if I go to the community, I go to people. Let me look. If I search for Ruth. Here we go. Oh, and go to your profile. So you've got pinned repositories, but Ruth, you haven't customized your GitHub profile yeah, yet. Yeah, um, I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay, today, right? Yeah. Tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, okay. We'll let you off tomorrow. And so yeah, you have, over the last six months, you have got green squares, which is really good. So you've made 222 contributions, which I think is a lot, right? It's 222. <laughs> Not two contributions, Not two. 222. 222. <laughs> and we can see the organizations that you belong to, which is awesome. So layer five um, and our community, which is great. Which is great. Yeah. So hopefully that answers the, the green square uh, question. Yeah. Okay, the chat's been really busy. I want to be a bit slow in catching up. Let me see. Uh, yes, so um, this is a question that is probably more from for me, but I'll be interested to hear Ruth's thoughts as well. So um, Krishna asks, we put a video on Hacktoberfest start to end. I have pasted, I have pasted, I have posted a video. I have done one, but if there's anything else that people think would be useful, let me know. I can do a live stream on it or I can do a video on it and we can discuss. Ruth, what are your thoughts on Hacktoberfest? Well, uh, I think I made a tweet uh, that was last month about who wants to join me in Hacktober. So I'm kind of trying to uh, bring like bring up a community from Nigeria where I get more Nigerians involved in Hacktober Fest. So I'm still planning on that. And yeah, joining Eddie's community, you should join Eddie's community to get more details. And you should also go to the the site and sign up to their mailing list because it happens in october right so sign up to their mailing list to get more information but on my own side i'm also trying to like bring up some people together so we do it together i know that that um community to do it together and contribute more yeah so that's awesome. That's what open source is about. I think a lot of times when people ask me what open source is, it is, open source is, a lot of people think it's just about code and then they eventually kind of move on to, oh, it's about documentation as well. Actually, it's more about communication and collaboration more than anything. And the code and documentation, etc. I think is a positive side effect from that. I've met so many amazing people. I've met Ruth, who we speak to quite often on open source stuff, and also all of you watching. I've met all of you and or virtually met all of you when we chat in the Discord, we chat on issues on GitHub, just to make sure we get those green squares. I think it's just so wonderful to all come together and all support each other. So every day my every suggestion day. to everyone is every day try and make one contribution to open source and as ruth said it doesn't have to be a pull request but also every day try and maybe help one other person just put a comment on their issue maybe some suggestions or ideas or even encouragement and um, what i love about our community is they encourage me and they really support me and nudge me and that really uh, gives me energy and i make time to do even more so i, I really think that's important i think people should realize that asking a question you're kind of almost encouraging someone to kind of but yes ruth agrees so i got the thumbs up from ruth that's good but that means a lot right again she's just encouraged me so what i was saying i was thinking is it good but she's said it is Go on, sorry, before you're going to say something. <laughs> so encouraging someone goes actually a long way. Like I've helped some people who I see helping someone else. So it actually makes me happy. So always try to encourage one person. It's the, that one person you give encouragement to would give to two and it goes, goes on and on and the chain just keeps going. So while you're trying to find your way around open source, while you're trying to understand, always try to bring somebody along with you right so try to push somebody along with you so the chain just keeps going yeah 
Another question from Azing, um, Mikey in our community. Why do people use different usernames? It confuses me. I have, you know, don't have a lot of space up here to store all this sort of stuff. So um, this is a great question. You spoke about onboarding earlier. What is onboarding? So if people are not sure what that means. Okay. Okay. So onboarding is the process of bringing in someone into a, so let's say you're onboarding someone to a project. So this means you're bringing in someone to the project, you're explaining every detail, you're explaining this is your way around, this is where you go to, this is who you go to for help. So during, when you get a job, there's actually the first stage is an onboarding process. So there's always that show you around the community, tell you what tool we use, how to use this tool, you're supposed to, like something like a guide basically. A guide to so in this case a guide to open source so every open source uh, community or project they have like an onboarding process so um, for the ones that have those onboarding that onboarding process they should improve on it they should review and look at it and try to get data and see if it is actually working yeah so that was what i was talking about earlier and I'm going to let everyone into a little bit of a secret about our community onboarding. It's very new, so it's not very good. And that's where all of you come in. So do join our community. And if things aren't clear, raise an issue, get that green activity square on your GitHub profile and let's improve it for the next people that are coming on board. We really welcome a lot of those um, types of contributions because it will just help the onboarding process for future people. So. Great question, and Great Ruth, question. thank you very much for for clarifying that. Yeah. That was uh, that was awesome. Thank Let's you. have a look. What else have we got? Uh, let me see. Loads of questions. This is really good. And uh, apologies if I miss people's questions. Let's see. So um, I think uh, I'm going to pronounce this name wrong. So apologies. Oh, that's disappeared again. No, come back. Um, I'm going to pronounce that name wrong, so I'm not going to try. I'm really sorry. But uh, the, the, unless Ruth, you want to try. Okay, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, I can say that. Sorry. I didn't know that's how you pronounced it. Apologies, Jeremiah. Uh, suggestion. Um, so this is a suggestion, right? This is an idea. And since we're all about helping beginners, we can create a web page where beginners can get their first PR. So again, that's a really good idea. I can think of some ideas how we could tweak that and so forth. So raise an issue, get the green square on your GitHub profile or raise a discussion actually. So one thing I think, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts, Ruth. I think you should show that for the discussions. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. So yeah, that's actually, the idea is actually great. Like a web page where beginners get their, there's something like that actually, like a first timers, um, I think firsttimers.com, firsttimersonly.com, where you understand how to, where you see there's like a list of projects where you see um, beginner friendly open source projects to contribute to. So there's something like that, but doing something on your own side too is actually great. You're just, you're being helpful. So doing something different is actually great, yeah. And please put it in the discussion, just like Eddie showing, put it on the discussion board would work further on it. Yeah, I think it'd be really good to, to have that discussion. So just to clarify, we haven't been very clear in our community and people have, have raised this in the Discord. So talking through this with you now, Ruth, and having the, the discussion with people in the, in the chat, yeah. I think if you want to raise an idea or start a discussion, raise it in discussions, you still get your green square. As you can see, uh, we have lots of discussions going on. The ones that have green tick mean they've been answered or completed. So you can filter yeah. by um, ones that are unanswered. And then once we've kind of like, take this idea, for example, the one we were just talking about a website to help people get their first PRs. We can start the discussion in the discussion tab. And then um, we can, once we've kind of finalized the solution, we could move it to an issue where someone could action that and do that and people get involved in building it. So uh, yes, and if you see, don't see discussions in your repos, it's because discussions is a beta feature beta feature on github and uh you've got access to that early so again another great reason for joining our community we get access to to beta features on github um things like code spaces and a few other things i can i can demo on coming up very soon yeah, I can't wait for code spaces. it's gonna be cool right i don't have to install yeah like, because 
because I've had issues trying to set up my development environment while contributing. So it's really great that GitHub has that feature coming in. I think it's in the beta version, yeah. Yeah, it's still in beta. I think it's coming out in September, October. And I've seen on my GitHub activities, like, you know, the people I follow, like Ruth, for example, I've seen her contribute to a Python project. I don't do Python, but I saw uh, an improvement I could make for someone like who'd be a, like a beginner from my point of view in Python. And I don't want to install Python and set up the project because I don't have that. But when I get code spaces, you can just click the code space button and it creates the environment with all the required version of python or mongo or whatever is needed and i can just focus on making like the code change or documentation change that that i want to so um yeah that's uh it can be really really exciting what else have we got let's have a look i've probably missed some so uh let's have a look what else have i got uh by the way i'd like to inform Okay, let's have me bring this up. This is, I think, just a bit of feedback. I didn't read the whole the whole okay. message, but let's um, let's have a look. Um, got inspired to customize my GitHub README. Awesome. So yes, yeah, so let me bring that up and see, and we can inspire uh, Ruth as well. So we do have a, another repo. Let me. Um, I love I love seeing what what people do for their. Um, yeah, I think yours is really great. I should do mine very soon. You should do yours. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And I think it's important for people yeah. to realize they don't have to get it perfect first time. It's something that you iterate on. So we do have a project called Awesome GitHub Profiles and people have submitted their profiles. So you can see how they've customized uh, their uh, their readmes differently. I think it's awesome. I'm really looking forward to getting Ruth's on here. So uh, Ruth, tomorrow yeah. I'm going to be chasing you. As some people yeah, say... Yeah. Open source contribution open source a day contribution keeps Eddie day. away because otherwise I'm going to be chasing people. <laughs> yeah. I'll share this link if people want it in the chat, if people want to get some yeah. uh, inspiration. Okay. Let's have a look. Oh, <laughs> Mikey's changed uh, their name. Thank you very much. Yes. Now, Azing has now renamed to Mikey, so I can not get confused oh, between... Oh, so Azing was Mikey. Exactly right. It confuses everybody. In Discord, you're chatting to Mikey. In YouTube, you're chatting to Azing. You don't realize they're the same person. So, uh, yes. That's really helpful. So, thank you. Um Yes, please chat in the Discord yes, or raise a discussion on GitHub. Yeah. Raise a discussion on GitHub because you'll get that uh, green square that we're all chasing, right? Uh, let's have a look at this question. So what do you think, Ruth? How long does it take uh, to get a PR merged? Okay, so depending on sometimes if there is no automation behind um, the project just like first contributions has an automation so it's like Eddie said earlier depending how small the change or how big the change so if it's a little change it it could take very quickly it's merged but if it's a big change the maintainer has to it's just like coming to change somebody's project changing everything in somebody's project you don't expect the person to just add it up immediately so i have to like review and look at it and say okay this is fine so it's it depends on two factors it depends on the kind of change then also you should take i, I think i mentioned this earlier patience so if the project is a really active one you are going to be getting a lot of pull requests coming in coming in so um you need to like be a little patient for the maintainers to review and merge your pull requests if there's a problem, they'll always communicate with the comments that there's actually a problem. So just hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. And I think and I think a good way to gauge that is to look at the closed pull requests. The ones that have been accepted or closed, it doesn't matter, but just to see how active the maintainer is. Because you've got to remember, I think, to the people listening, that a lot of the maintainers do have day jobs, do have families. So it might take yeah. kind of 24 hours, 48 hours. And if there's more automation, like you said, you're absolutely right. Um, it's usually a bit faster. And you're absolutely right on the smaller the pull request, the more likely it's going to get merged and the faster it's going to get merged. So keep it all small. I think I want to add something. So I want to add something to this. So 
I have co I've contributed to some projects where the PRs are still there till today. <laughs> so sometimes the project might not be active. So yeah, the project might have issues with maintenance. So that's actually a thing. So the project might not be active. And unfortunately, if that's your first PR, you're going to get a little discouraged. But you shouldn't be discouraged if that's your first PR because sometimes some projects are not maintained properly. So maybe it has been abandoned. So if that's the case, you don't get discouraged if the PR is not made. Like I said, I have like three PRs that have been there for like three months <laughs> and all my checks failed. They didn't, none of them passed. So <laughs> I think I'm better off, yeah. But the thing is, the you thing still is, get the, gr still uh, the green square contribution. It's still yeah, good practice. It's still good practice. Um, so it's really, exactly. it's it's not about, it's good to get a, a merge and a good to get the automated test to pass, etc. But it's not the end of the world if it doesn't. So if anyone, exactly. you know, you just go on and create more and you learn from it. So if you, you can't learn from something if people don't do it. So I love it that Ruth just shared that she raised a pull request that hasn't been accepted, that automated tests don't pass, you know, but she learned a lot from it and nothing will be, that will be kind of like, nothing's as scary as that once you've kind of had one that has got the X crosses, the red crosses on it and it hasn't yeah. been merged. That's the scariest thing That's that can happen. So once you've done that, so you've done then everything else is like more positive. Like so, more positive. so uh, that's an awesome story. I love that one. Yeah. I love this from uh, Karen. <laughs> Open source contribution a day keeps ending your way. I might have that as a catchphrase from now on if everyone finds that yeah, funny. Sure. <laughs> I thought I was just a bit weird, I but I love the support. <laughs> See, this is the support that I need. So thank you. <laughs> if you want a green square for today, Karen, raise an issue and say Eddie this should be your catchphrase and just just type that in and then you, know, you get a green square for today and it remind me to do something with it because I'll probably forget with my uh, terrible memory <laughs> awesome uh and discord link yeah I will there should be a link in the description discord below if not I will share another one in the in the chat what else have I missed? How are we doing on time? Oh, we've been going for an hour already. So we've got a couple of minutes left and then I'm going to leave Ruth to go do some more open source contributions and and, and yeah. sort out her uh, GitHub profile. No, I'm just joking. That's tomorrow. Sure. Actually, you just made me think of something. If people are unsure about what to put in their GitHub repo to customize, sorry, the GitHub readme to customize their GitHub page, I think they should just go create the repo for that which is the same name as their username and then okay. by default it puts your name in it and that's it right but now someone else can then maybe add that to you so i've got some ideas for you, you ruth so i can't contribute those ideas until you create that repo so if you create that repo <laughs> I'll create it right now, that'd be cool. <laughs> okay, create the repo and then we can uh, add some badges yeah, to it, badges. maybe just add some thoughts. And you don't have to accept sure. everything. Sure. End of the day, everyone watching, yeah. when you create a repo, when you create this repo, it's the same as your username. If people do send you, or any other repo do send you changes, you don't have to accept it. So it won't appear on your profile until you accept it yourself. Yeah. Uh, okay, I need to touch up on the questions but this one's just come in and i'm sure other people are thinking that how do i uh, join the community on github on the support repo raise an issue just saying i'd like to join the organization and after this live stream when i get a moment i'll go through and add everyone to the organization let's have a look okay what else have i missed I kind of find the discussion tab or on your GitHub. Okay, so uh, Joel, I will just uh, show share my screen and uh, um, show you that. Now is on. It's not on every repo. It's on the support repo. So go to the issue section if you want to get added to the organization. I can see lots of people doing that, which is great. And you'll see this extra tab at the top, which is uh, discussions. You can go here and you can start a new discussion and you can give it a category. Is it an idea? Does it help? Or even just say thanks. If you want to get a green square, just say thank you. And we will all appreciate that in the community. Um, so yeah. Wow, so many questions. I feel so bad. I've missed so many. Don't forget, Ruth is in our community. So you could always, if you have a question for me or Ruth or for Ruth or for me or for both of us, whichever it is or anyone else, just raise a start a discussion, ask the question and, and tag us. You can do at Eddie or at Ruth. Um, it should auto complete with people in the, uh, in the community, in the organization. 
and uh, we'll we'll have a look and we'll answer. And if we can't answer, we'll find someone else yeah, that, yeah. who can. <laughs> awesome. Okay. I think I'm not going to get through all these questions. Oh. There's some more more questions on how to join Discord and the community. I will put another. Let me see. I think the the Discord link is up here. So let me copy this and yeah. put that in the chat again. There's a Discord link, and here's the community link. Right, Ruth, is there anything else you'd like to add? Okay, so aside uh, code documentation, even having an open source project is contributing to open source. So that project you build, that side project, you can make it open source, your website looks really beautiful, you can open source it for people to look at it and uh, do it just the way you did it. So having a project and bringing it to the community is a good contribution as well. Yeah, so I think that's one thing I wanted to add. Awesome, love that. Love that encouragement. Love that we'll encouragement. Uh, we'll definitely yeah. keep that encouragement keep going that encouragement. in Discord and on, on GitHub. Uh, so that's just great. Ruth, I want to say thank you so much for joining me on a live stream and sharing your journey, your experiences, your tips and tricks and uh, the exciting news about you know your conference and also your conference talk and also the community that you're doing as well. Anything we can all do to help to get involved, then let us know. Yeah. Thanks for adding me, Eddie. No problem. I look yeah. forward to geeking out with you more. And uh, for anyone who's just joined, I see a few people who have just joined, uh, the live stream will be available afterwards. So you can catch up on what was missed. Uh, it might take YouTube up to 24 hours to, to render it and post it, but it will be available probably from tomorrow. And don't forget to join our community and geek out with, with me yeah. and Ruth. Give the video a thumbs up, help uh, support the community and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. It's completely free. free. Ruth, yeah. thank you thank again. You. I think um, yeah. it's time to uh, get a drink and uh, for you to relax. <laughs> I'm going to bring up the holding page. Don't go away. We'll have a quick chat thank afterwards. Thank you for joining, everybody. <laughs> thank you, everyone. It was Bye. awesome. We'll chat to you all soon. We'll find yeah. this holding page. Here we go.